Holy moly. Oh. I was going to play World of Warcraft, but it needs a patch. Yeah. A patch. Of course. Of course it needs a patch. Because I was going to play it. But anyways, I digress. We're not here to talk about sad, depressing things. No. We're here to talk about Will White's Cradle books. These books are awesome. If you've not read them, you need to. You should go right out and buy the first one called Unsold. Available on Amazon. I'm not kidding. They are fantastic. They are better than anything you are watching or have watched or have read in a while. And yes, you would like them. You would like them very much, Lady Vixen. main character of Cradle is a character named Wei Shi Linden. And Wei Shi Linden is unsold. In this world, everyone has the ability to use magic. And everybody has a disposition in his village, in Wei Shi Linden's village, towards a certain type of magic. Except for Linden, who does not. He is unsold. And so the story of his books, the books, the Cradle series by Will White, is Weishi Linden gathering power to himself, just getting stronger despite the disadvantage of being unsold. So, what you need to do is just go out and buy the first one right now. If you don't own it already, you just need to go out and buy right now. Just start reading it. Leave the stream. Go read it. Go listen to it. If you get it on Audible, just start right now. now. I will say this. The first time I started that, I was like working, was doing something, and I wasn't able to keep my focus 100% on the book. And so I had to come back to it like a few days later, and then I was able to get into it. But... If you're just focusing, if you're just reading it, not listening to it while you're doing something else, you probably will be okay. But they're great, man. And there's a bunch of volumes, I mean, that are out. Ten. Ten volumes out. And boy, you're going to just smoke through them if you start reading them. You will just blaze through them and you will enjoy them so much. That by the time you get to 10, you will be mad that 11 isn't out. You know, like some fantasy series you're waiting years and years and years to get. And you're just praying that, please don't let this man die before this next book comes out. Well, Will White puts out a book at least once a year, multiple times a year. He's putting this stuff out and it's fantastic. I mean, I cannot recommend this series enough. Honestly. I'm not, this isn't a joke. I'm not being facetious. I'm not just being silly. It is that good. Now, what instigated this? Well, a man named Larry Correa was complaining on Twitter that everybody just complains on the internet about what they don't like. Wait, well, that's what I complain about. Not on Twitter, but on here. I complain about it. Everyone just talks about what they don't like. So I'm going to talk about what I do like, which is the Cradle series by Will White. I mean, I cannot... You know how you watched Dragon Ball Z when you were a kid? And the best parts were when they got, like, a new power 
and they use the new power. Imagine a book series that is just those moments of them, the awesome moments of Dragon Ball Z without any of the like episode, multiple episodes of them just screaming. No, it is that good. Hello, Ruth. I don't, I'm not a big fan of Stephen King, but I have read some of his books, his book on writing. I've listened to it. I have it on audible. It's multiple, listened to it multiple times and it is a, I enjoyed it. I don't know that it, I mean, I'm sure there are things in it that have helped me to write, but since I haven't actually published anything, can I really say that it was all that helpful? No. I, other books that I've read by Stephen King, The Dead Zone. I enjoyed that one. Wouldn't, I don't think I'm going to be rushing out to read it again. I've read about half, well, yeah, about a third of the way through the stand. It's a huge, long book, so I haven't finished it. I plan on it. I've read the uh, the Eyes of the Dragon. I don't remember what happens. Mm, what else? Oh, I read something recently. What was it? It was a Stephen King thing, didn't I? Must have been super memorable. Oh, it was uh, Salem's Lot. That was okay. It was interesting. I wouldn't say that I got too ridiculously uh, carried away with it. Oh, hey, Crossplay Gaming. How are you not a mod? Um, yeah, Salem's Lot. That was all right. Uh, what else have I read? I think that's it. I'm not a huge Stephen King person. Jack Kirby's Fourth World. Hmm. Enjoy. Welcome, Video James. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Is he not a well-known author? Who? Larry Korea? Kidding. Uh, Will White is super successful in the independent publishing market. Uh, he is very successful. He's done a very good job of marketing himself and writing books on a consistent basis that are worth reading. The guy who reads the books on Audible for these are like really good and does a fantastic job. So if you want to try them out on Audible uh, and you don't, you know, I would recommend it. It's pretty good as far as the readers go. Sometimes readers can, can make a big difference. And on this one, he's solid. Absolutely solid. I actually think the author's name would be a good title of a book, Will of the White. Could be. Could be. Yep, that is why it's not the library, but Lady Vixen, we have the first one on Audible. I think we have like the first two. I listened to them on Audible, most of them while they were included in the Audible membership uh, sometime earlier this year slash last year before the latest volume came out. I listened to all of them up until the latest one that was out at the time. One has subsequently come out and oh, and that's why I've listened to them all, obviously. Uh, God, I just want more to come out. They're that good. Honestly, I, I it is part of a genre of fantasy that is called progression fantasy by some people the idea that it's about a character who is progressing in their abilities to use magic and it is the premier example of such a thing it almost makes me want to write a progression fantasy except for the fact that it would not be as good and you know how some of these books you read and you're like man why does it gotta have that in it why does it gotta have that in it you know what i'm talking about whatever it is your pet peeve of like whatever nonsense that gets included in books and in fantasy books. It's not in there. It's, it's just good action, fun, magic characters that are enjoyable to, to get to know, to just see them progress, to get stronger. Fantastic. Arc of the reed and the cloud fire cloud. Uh, that is not what I read recently but apparently is what Ruth read recently. Uh, the most recent book that I have read is called, which I need to finish, nearly finished, is uh, 
The Revenant and the Tomb by Herman P. Hunter. So far, so good. You can hear more about that when I think about it during my interview with Herman P. Hunter coming soon, most likely this weekend, if we are both available. Now, what I want you guys to do, other than buy Will White books, specifically the Cradle series, Unsold, Volume 1, is to support people that are making content and promoting good content. I, I am tired. I am tired of the Disney and the Warner Brothers. All this nonsense. I am tired of it. I don't care if it's good. I don't care if it's bad. I'm tired of it. There are people putting out quality content. There are people who are not just putting out content complaining about what they don't like about Disney and Warner Brothers and so on and so forth. Now, have I done that kind of content? Oh, of course I have. Of course I have. The sad state of the internet is that if I had titled this stream something like, you know, Drama Alert, Fly Fox Roasts, Matt Crotz, people would have clicked on it. It's true. It's true. How many books are in the series? Ten so far. Ten. And here's the deal. They're not that expensive. Get them on Kindle. They're worth it, man. I'm telling you, they're worth it. They're not They're not like super long. I th when we think of fantasy books, a lot of times we think of some huge, giant, Wheel of Time-esque book. You know, like... You know, some huge giant book like, oh my word, how can I possibly read that? Tell those. You've got to be kidding. I don't have Wheel of Time here. So I can't just whip it out and hold up a giant stack of books that I couldn't even have on this little screen. No, they're 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 not as uh, as long. Ooh, baby slobber on my shirt. They're good. They're they're worth watching and reading yeah i haven't uh i haven't read it it's in my to read pile next to the bed along with some perdane books chronicles of perdane by lloyd alexander here's another chronicles of perdane book Hmm. Oh, these ones, which I'm interested in reading, is, this isn't the first one. The Dark is Rising by Susan Cooper. The, the Dark is Rising sequence. I'm not familiar with these fantasy books, uh, but I'm, I'm super interested in them. We found these at the Goodwill. They'd been remaindered from a local public school library i love these library bound books like this ah reeks of childhood i don't mean that it smells i just mean that it's nostalgia bait even if i haven't read it just the idea of it i also uh, we also got this one which is diane Wynne jones the ogre downstairs uh, diane Wynne jones is the person who wrote howl's moving castle if you've seen that miyazaki movie uh, that was based on a book that she wrote so we have a, a couple of other of her books. The Crestomancy books. So she's a prominent children's fantasy author. Oh, what else do we have here? Boneyard. Another remaindered book from the library. Boneyard by Shannon McGuire of... Uh, the October Days series that Lady Vixen can review for us. It's sort of a it's a, a Deadlands book. So if you'd know the Deadlands RPG setting based in that, 
which is kind of cool. I've read the opening pages of this, and I am excited to read it. Here's one of the things I really like about this book, is it's got pictures. I mean, remember when books had pictures? Someday I'm going to make a book. I'm going to write a book, finish it, and it's going to have pictures in it, like this. What else is in here? We also have the Cleric Quintet, Forgotten Realms book. I was looking for this for a long time because I didn't want to buy all the individual Cleric Quintet books by R.A. Salvatore because I don't really, I'm not the hugest R.A. Salvatore fan. I've read some of the Dritz books, like the first couple. But I wasn't like, oh, I got to go out and get, I got to buy all the Cleric Quintet books. But I saw this collected edition. I was like, oh, I'll get that one. That'll take up less room on the shelf. Not some of the stuff, but not all of the stuff that's in my to-read pile. But what you should add to your to-read pile is Will White's Cradle Series book, starting with Volume 1, Unsold. Jimmy has read The Darkest Rising. Welcome, Jimmy. I've also been getting into Sherlock Holmes again. Haven't read all of them. I think I want to make that a goal. That is a, a worthwhile goal. I've been thinking a lot about mysteries lately. When I was a kid, I read all kinds of mysteries, including Sherlock Holmes, but mostly, you know, Hardy Boys, Boxcar Children, things meant for children. And I really enjoyed them. But as I grew up, I stopped reading mysteries. There wasn't a compelling series that I was like, oh, I really got to read these. I think the closest thing I've gotten to reading uh, in terms of mysteries is the Jim Butcher books, Dresden Files the Dresden Files. Uh, they're okay. I kind of got burned out. I listened to like a bunch in a row. Like a bunch. Uh, as I was, because they were available on Audible. I own, I bought them, a lot of them. But they're all packed away, so I listened to them on Audible, uh, not on Audible, on uh, Overdrive, the library app. The library app. I listened to them on there because they were available. Yeah, and I got burned out. My favorite Jim Butcher book that I've ever read is the Aeronauts Windless, which is only one book in that series. P Money, I am not letting you down. When I say that this book is awesome, and the series as a whole is awesome, and it just each subsequent book gets more and more awesome. Like I cannot sell you enough on this. It is that good. It is that good. And, guys, Herman P. Hunter, who we know as Jeff Potts, wrote a book. It's available on Amazon. And I'm going to put the link in the description. You know what I should have done if I was thinking what I would have done was was put the link into the top of this video which I'm going to do right now There we go. Pinned. Pinned. Okay, I'm making a commitment. Good. You should read it. It's amazing. Now, I'm not, when I say that these books are worth reading, I'm not just saying, oh, well, I think you might like it. I personally liked it. No, I'm saying it's good. Gets the, the Fly Fox uh, stamp of approval. 
And to, sh to demonstrate my commitment to talking positively about things, it doesn't mean there won't be criticism, because criticism is different from this constant complaining about the new Lord of the Rings adaption, the new Wheel of Time episode, the new Obi-Wan Kenobi. I don't care. I don't care. It's okay if you care, but I don't. But real, genuine criticism of something, really looking at it, analyzing it, did it, why did it work? What was good about it? What does the story have to tell us? Or some of its themes? Go on and on listing show ideas, topics. Genuine criticism, there might be. Why didn't this work? But to show my commitment, I am currently working on a video that will be over 10 minutes long that is about a, song, about a movie that I like. And I'm putting a lot of effort into this. It's a lot, it, this is a video that I'm putting a lot of effort into. And I'm not being facetious here. I know I am often facetious, sarcastic. But I want you to know that I am, I'm going to try to demonstrate my my commitment to being more positive and to promote books and things that I like. Again, guys, set your calendars for this weekend. I want you to be there when I do... I know I haven't done many of these podcasts. Speaking of which... But I have a channel called Tales from the Silent Planet where I'm going to be posting. Hopefully, I'll be getting interviews and things. And I'm going to be posting these entire episodes. They'll go live here. On this channel, I will conduct interviews with authors, creative types, perhaps other people. Um, but I want you guys to subscribe to that channel because there will be exclusive content on that channel that will, will not be on this one. There's also a podcast feed, which you can get on your podcast catchers of, of your desire. I believe that it is. I know it's on Amazon. I believe it's on Google and it's on Castbox. Those are the ones that matter. Don't use Spotify. It sucks. Good job, P Money. Hopefully you clicked my link so that I got ad money. Uh or the the, the associates money. But if you didn't, it's not my, it's not your fault because I didn't think of making it doing it in the first place, which I should have. Here's the deal. It is that good, P Money. If you don't like it, I genuinely want to have a conversation like a real conversation about why because i want to understand why someone wouldn't like something that is as fantastic as this series is it's one of those book series that like you want to see what happens you want to know what happens not because there's like there are sort of cliffhanger things from time to time but because you want to see this character progress because you genuinely like the main character you genuinely want to see what happens to him you want to see how he develops, how he gets more powerful, the relationships that he's building with other characters, who he meets next, who he fights next. You genuinely want to know. Now, I like some animu shows. I like some shonen animu shows. But one of the biggest criticisms I have of these shonen animu shows is that often they get to a point where it just kind of peters off. Like, did you ever watch Bleach? Like, the first arc of Bleach is amazing. Amazing. And then it just, like, this sharp decline. Like, it, it's, like it's going up, and like, this is fantastic. And then it's like, boom. Like, oh, can, like, I want to get back to that feeling. This, this Cradle series, it's just straight up, my friends. It's just straight up.
That's terrible, Pimani. I feel so bad for you that you live in Canada. Is it well written? Let me tell you. The prose is serviceable. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's like some Patrick Rothfuss, George R. R. Martin, like years and years worth of spending all your time crafting this tome that is expertly written and that every word of it is is poetic. And you, you just take one little quote from it and you're like, holy cow, that's beautiful. That's a beautiful language. It is well written in the sense that the ideas, the story is communicated well. It is not some poetic masterpiece of prose, if such a thing exists. But I don't want that to be taken as a criticism. It's just explaining what kind of prose it is. It is there to tell you the story. It is there to communicate it to you. And it is very clear and understandable, which is nice. Not overly flower, flowery. All right. What I want you to do is to stop living in Canada and to move to the United States. Just like, just move to like North Dakota or something. It's not that far. Yeah, I'm you'll, sure you'll be a lot more satisfied with your life. I do plan, I do have been thinking, I don't want to plan on it yet, but I have been thinking about doing a video about these books, really talking, not just a live stream where I'm, where I'm trying to get you to buy it, but rather, why not, my not? That's what I say, be money but rather where I'm actually analyzing some of the themes and stuff. So you got to read them first so that they're not spoiled for you when I talk about the plot development and stuff. Because I don't like just, oh, you should go and watch this, but I'm not going to spoil it. And I also don't like these videos. And this is the nostalgia critic type of video. And I've made them. Back when that was popular, I made one. And I planned on making more of them at the time because that was the big deal. Big, big way to do things was to just recap the entire movie while making jokes about it. I don't, I'm, I'm tired of that. Sometimes it's okay. Sometimes it works, but often they are, they, they just get old. It's like, okay, you told me the story of this and you made some jokes along the way, I guess. No. I like SF Debris, that channel and website. I mean, if you haven't watched that, I recommend it. However, that guy, the best thing that, the best stuff that he does is when he's really analyzing something, not when he's doing that kind of recap jokery stuff. Well, I've never been to Jamestown and I've never been to North Dakota. I've only ever been to South Dakota, so... I, I don't know. It's where my ancestors, at least some of them, were from. Was I mean, not originally, obviously, from or something. But uh, as far as where they resided in the United States, where they were born and raised. Now, here's what I want from you. What I want from you is to report back we're gonna have we're gonna have a book report segment on Tales from the Silent Planet. And if you record your book report and send it to me, I will include it in the podcast. That's right. That's right. I'll be profiting off of your work. It's true. Speaking of which, I need to upload those videos to that channel. Which, if you haven't subscribed, it's right up there. That channel right up above there. The only only subscriber on there so far is me. Pretty sad. 
uh, those episodes that are on there are episodes I did a really long time ago. And the audio in some of them is not great. This was before everybody was doing things over the internet and communicating over the internet, recording that stuff. And it took a little bit of doing at the time. These are not recent things that I did. Did it with a friend of mine. Well, I'll write a report and send it to you. Like, as I said, give me 30 days. 30 days. Not that long a book, be money. But I'll give you 30 days. Got to the end. He got till July. July 7th. I'll say that. Give you 31 days. How about that? How about them apples, huh? How do you like that? All right, now what I want you to do is to enjoy yourself while you're reading this. Don't just think about, oh, I got to report back. I got to tell Fly Fox if I liked it or not. No, just enjoy it. Lose yourself in a story about fun and adventure and determination and magic. Lots of magic. Here's also what I want you to do. I want you to enjoy the things that you're watching. Don't hate watch things. If you're genuinely enjoying them, that's fine. But when you're like, oh, I've got to see the next episode because I've got to see if it's as cringe as this episode was. Just stop. Put it down. Go read something you enjoy. Go watch some movie or, or television program you've seen before, but you've enjoyed it. You know that it's good. I like Lord of the Rings. I like J.R. Tolkien's work. But it doesn't matter to me whether or not the Amazon show is any good because I'm not going to watch it. I don't care. I honestly don't care. I don't care. So what will I do instead? Well, I'll continue to, to read the books occasionally and and to, to reread them and, and to watch the adaptions that were good and the ones that were not so good, like the old cartoons. Is that how you enjoy books? Ooh. Now, when I tell you these books are good, I don't just mean in some some way that I'm, I'm I'm trying to to pump up something that I sort of mediocrely like mediocrely is that a word that I, I sort of in a mediocre fashion have liked or on average I thought it was okay no I really really enjoyed these really enjoyed them so much that I'm looking forward to the next book that comes out and there's a lot of series where I've read them and I'm like yeah okay yeah the next one comes out I might read it or I've read the series and I'm like man if another one comes out this I'm I'm not reading it. I don't care. Like I just told you, the Dresden Files. Jim Butcher is super popular. Super, super popular. And there's a good six books in that series, I think, that I haven't read. Not run, not beaten down and endorsed to read them. And I've enjoyed them for the most part. No. These books are so enjoyable that as soon as the next one comes out, I will get it. And I will read it. That's how good it is. In my opinion. All right, now that you've you you told you understand fully what I'm saying about these books. The next the next the next the next task got ahead of myself there and got tongue tied. Have you ever done that? Gotten tongue tied? It happens sometimes. Yes, I listened to them all. Because at the time, they were available on Audible Plus. But I, I do plan on getting them all on Audible over time. So that I can listen to them again. You know, it's a good question. Green Eggs and Ham is a classic. And I, I'm not sure it can compare quite on that level. However... I do think 
that it is worth reading. Just because something is not as good as green eggs and ham does not mean that it's not worth reading. Am I right? Now that we've gotten this all out of the way, and we understand just what I think about these books, I want you to commit yourself to sharing things that you like on the internet. You know, just share it out. You like something? Talk about what you liked. It's so much easier to talk about what you didn't like Say, hey, man, I really like this. Hey, man, have you read this? Hey, I know you like fantasy books. Have you read this book? I, I know you like comics. Have you read this comic? P-Money, I think you're taking it too seriously. Well, here's the deal. What I want you guys to do is go read a book. Go watch something you enjoy. Go listen to something you enjoy. Enjoy what life has for you. There's a lot of great stuff out there. Larry Correa, who I mentioned earlier, he's got some books that are enjoyable to read that I thoroughly have enjoyed. But you know what? There's books in those series that I own. I haven't read them yet. And guess what? When a new Will White book comes out, I read it right away. And I like Larry Crea. I've been reading this stuff for years. So, I'm going to end the program today on that thought. That Larry Crea is one of my favorite fantasy authors. I really enjoy He's inspired me. I listen to his podcast. I've been reading his blog for years. He's inspired me somewhat to write. I participated in his sad puppy campaigns and was lied about along with everybody else involved in it by, in, you know, the mainstream media, NPR, lied about me as a group. And yet, even though I buy one of his books when it comes out, I don't read it right away. But if a cradle book comes out, I'm going to read it right away. true. Adios.